This is going to be your frozen beverage preventative maintenance video on a CFB machine. First and foremost, you're going to want to make sure that the unit is cleaned and sanitized with a food grade sanitizer. As you can see here, we use K5 sanitizer and cleaner. You also are going to want to make sure that the machine is put into clean mode by having the switch turned all the way to the right, signaling clean. Inside your PM kit or your preventative maintenance kit, you should receive a tube of Hanes Lubrifilm, receive a belt, valve body O-ring, should receive your dispense tube O-rings, you'll have two carb tube O-rings, a float O-ring, a shaft seal set, you'll have a front Seder bearing and a rear Seder bearing inside your kit. So first we're going to start with our valve body. So we'll remove our valve body. First seal you'll have is your valve body seal. You want to take that out. You can apply light lubricant to allow the new seal to seat in. Next, you'll have your O-rings for your dispense tube. You're just going to want to remove your pin. And you'll replace these three O-rings. You can use lubricant to allow these to slide on as well as to move freely inside the valve body. Next, you have your dasher. Do you see here? You have your front Seder bearing and your rear Seder bearing. They'll slide off. Slide on, making sure that the flush edge is at the front. Same thing with your rear, that the flush edge is facing towards the front of the barrel. On the end of your dasher, you also have your shaft seal. And you can see it is a directional seal. You'll want to make sure that the flush edge is against the back of the dasher and the raised ceramic edge goes towards the back of the barrel as indicated here on the seal. The back of the barrel, you have the second half of your rear shaft seal at the very back. You can utilize your valve body dispense lever this lip right here to pull out the rear seal. Once you've removed your rear shaft seal, you're gonna to wanna to insert your new shaft seal. You can see your shaft seal has a smooth ceramic edge facing out. If you were to take it out, there is a ridged rough ceramic side that inserts into the rubber. You can apply light lubricant to help the seal slide in to the back of the barrel. To reinstall your plunger and handle into your valve body, you're going to insert your plunger, make sure your indented end is facing forward. You'll want to apply pressure to the bottom of the plunger, insert your handle, and slide your pin through. And 
And when you're finished, your handle will be facing in the up position. Put your valve body back on. You're gonna wanna go corner to corner on your nuts, making sure that you're applying the same tension to each corner to ensure you get a proper seat and seal on your valve body. So you'll tighten down opposing corners to ensure your seat. Next, you're gonna have your float O-ring at the top here. We'll remove that. No lubrication is necessary. Slide it back in place. You also have your carb tube O-rings. You can apply lubrication to these as well. Slide them off, slide your new ones on. Next, you're gonna to wanna to check your condenser coil. Uh, you'll want to vacuum off any dust or debris that's built up across your coils. The fan does suck air through this side out to the other side. So you can also check on the left hand side where the fan is to ensure that there's no dust build up around the fan blades. Then we're going to want to check our motor. Specifically, you have a pin sleeve, this rubber boot. Make sure that it is intact and it is not damaged. You also will have your micro switch. You want to check and make sure that that is in proper working order. Check your bearings to ensure that they are secure and stable. You also have your tension spring. You're going to want to make sure that your coils are in a nice tight pattern. You have your clear tube here for your overflow. If there's any debris or uh, product built up in here, that means that your rear shaft seal was indeed bad. You'll want to take this hose and rinse it out with uh, some warm soapy water. And it could be a sign that your shaft seal was installed backwards at one period of time if this tube has product built in it. You're gonna to wanna to check your valve cap on your compressor and make sure it isn't tight to ensure that if any Freon were leaking out that the cap is doing its job. Last but not least, we have our belt. So to take off our belt, no tool is really needed. Just gonna loop the belt around the pulley. It'll slide off. Strap the belt on. And again, using the pulley, we've got it back on. You're gonna wanna check and make sure that your flywheel is secured. There are locking nuts on the flywheel. As well as we wanna make sure that our upper flywheel and our lower pulley are in line. We can do this with a straight edge between the two to make sure that there's no gap. And you wanna make sure that the tension on your belt is no more than a half an inch. You're going to want to ensure that this capillary tube on the outside is getting cool to ensure that your Freon is moving freely through the system and there is Freon in the system still. 